Hi, this is Tom for PokerVIP.com and welcome to part two of my Potter and Overheart series here on Guts. Uh, so it's a little different in this second part. As you can see on the right hand table, we have managed to get a deep stack PLO game going. So we have a 200 big blind stack. There's one uh, gentleman who's a little deeper. We do have one tiny short stack, but hopefully he's either going to rebuy or um, you know, go, go broke, and that's going to mean we have some more deep stake, uh, sorry, deep stack dynamics, which we're going to slightly alter ranges, slightly alter um, SPR considerations, and just um, be an additional thing for us to think about, and we'll be talking through that uh, as and when those spots turn up. Uh, left hand table is very much as it was before. Um, so yeah, uh, the first part, we had a few good spots, had a couple of Reasonably good three bet spots that didn't quite work out for us, but were pretty good long term. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, if we continue in that vein, everything should be fine. Very loose uh, play from the cutoff, but it does mean the short stack's gone, so we're reasonably content with that. Just going to be folding. In general, we're not going to be playing a particularly wide range in small blind. Uh, it's not going to be anything like as wide as defending range in the big blind. The reasons being that we're getting a significantly worse price just because our investment is half what it would be in the big blind. And also we're out of position to likely two people if we call. It's going to greatly incentivize the big blind to overcall. Uh, so our range is going to be uh, you know, a lot tighter than it would be in the big blind. And that's going to be particularly uh, significant on a deep stack table where 200 big lines effective, um, calling out the small line just becomes an even less attractive option. A uh, reasonable hand to open on the button if it does get folded around to us. Does indeed. We shall start off with a nice little raise on the button. Uh, playing the big blind just shown down quite a loose under the gun open. Uh, this flop kind of hits us, but it also crushes our range pretty well. We're going to have a lot of aces, a lot of kings, a lot of two pairs, a lot of nut flushes, a lot of flush draws with straight combos and the like. Um, as is, when he calls, he's going to have some flush draws, he's going to have some queen jack tens, and the occasional ace he shouldn't have too many kings, purely because, generally speaking, um, he's not going to have many two pairs. So we are going to fire again. Repping the ace king and etc. Uh, we're going to size down and fire through. The reason he has very few kings is just because the king on board is a club, so any flush draws he has are going to be ace high rather than, um, you know, if it were the other way around, he could certainly have a king just because the king contains the flush draw. But given the king of clubs is out, it just reduces the combos of bear kings he can have significantly. Um, so when the board pairs, it's just going to favor us uh, to a pretty significant degree. Um, granted, if we get caught, we're totally shutting down. We have a bottom pair and a weak flush draw, but it's a spot where we're going to use range advantage. And I haven't played this guy before, to my memory. He certainly hasn't. I haven't played him on this account, so he's not going to be aware, um, you know, of anything about my range. And like, it's a default line. If someone fires two shells there, you know, they're probably going to have it. So it gives me the benefit of the doubt, which I'm reasonably grateful for. To make a somewhat loose open on the left hand table, but I think it's pretty reasonable. Certainly would prefer this being double suited, in which case it'd be a standard slam dunk open, but as it is, it's still a perfectly reasonable hand. Can be following the threes. Again, not much more needs to be said. Do look like we're about to go five handed on the deeper table, which is always nice. It means the table is less likely to break, just as I start recording. Can be following the small blind. It's an average strength hand, nothing more. And opening our button again. Pretty reasonable hand to do it with. If we do get three bet, we're likely just calling. We don't have an ace blocker. And we're just going to check back here. Our opponent can have some random aces that continue when we gain very little by betting. And defending on the left hand table, we do have the, heart, uh, the, sorry, the diamond blocker. It is tempting to somewhat turn it into a bluff, but the benefits are not especially prevalent. Left hand table with a backdoor flush draw, gut shot, and an opponent who can give up. We are going to peel one. 
and evaluate exactly what we do. Turn of last draw, but it is a ward pairing card. That said, I doubt my opponent has a particularly balanced check calling range here. Uh, if he does, he's going to get me firing one street, so I guess. That's why people tend to be balanced, uh, you know, why being balanced is it tends to be profitable here, but I do expect this to get through a pretty good chunk of the times. If he calls, I'm checking through just about any river, even the ones that make straights, that make flushes. It'll be a spot where we likely can't extract value even the times we're ahead. Interesting check check spot on the right hand table. My opponent has capped his range. That being said, my jacks are probably just a little too strong to turn into a bluff. There are some backdoor straights that come in. My opponent's incredibly unlikely to have a flush, but given I've checked twice, it's pretty unlikely. I have a flush as well, which is going to take showdown here. Uh, it's a disappointing bet, but frankly, there's a lot of straight combos he can have here, so I'm just going to side fold it. And left hand table, reasonable candidate for a three bet. It's also fine to call. Pretty disappointing flop, but just not giving up. Just chasing a bear gut shot is going to be a pretty bad idea in general, but especially when our opponent pots and has very little behind. The stacked pot ratio is just not favoring any floats as it was in the spot where we had position. That spot we happened to be out of position. Our opponent has a stronger range given he's raised in early position than a blind versus blind battle. Uh, there's just a number of considerations why I'm just giving up there. Reasonable jacks on the deep table. Obviously, if there was suited to the ace, we'd be even happier, but forehanded, this is pretty damn strong. Called in two spots. Somewhat of a disappointing flop, truthfully. You do have a gut shot, you do have a backdoor flush, but they're in the end of the positives. It's going to be a pretty good candidate for just checking through. If it happens to get checked round, there are some good turns. We can potentially use the heart blocker as a bluff on the turn. You know, a heart comes off. Um, the dream card, obviously, is the nine. Just like that. I'm going to try and extract value off very occasionally 10 6, but mainly flush draws. There can be some two pairs that can call one street. Hands like 9 7, Queen 9. Get raised. I can be getting free rolled by a jack 10 with enough flush draw, but given I have two jacks in my range, that seems somewhat unlikely. As played, I think we just get this in here. It's a bit unfortunate that he did actually have a jack 10 with a flush draw, given I had two jacks in my hand. If I only had the one jack for my jack 10, I would just be calling, but with two jacks, it's so unlikely that my opponent actually has it. But I felt like it was reasonable getting it in. The presence of a blocker meant that it would greatly reduce the combos he can have, but unfortunately he was right at top of range. It happens. Gonna be betting here with my heart blocker. And barring a board pair, we're basically going for all three. Pretty disappointing turn. There are going to be some full house combos in this range. There is still a very, very slim chance that my opponent called with Ace X, and I happen to be good, but there we are. He does seem to be calling pretty wide. Hopefully, a couple more people sit down, keep this table alive. I do like the deep stack tables. It is something that I think more sites should offer. I know, for example, PokerStars used to offer it years ago, and they no longer do. 
um, and if Full Tilt, when that was still around, used to offer them, and I played on those quite a lot. So it's something I do like, um, but for whatever reason, it seems to be out of vogue a little bit. But especially a game like Pot of an Omaha, the 200 big blind element to it sort of completely changes the dynamic of the game. going to be check folding a board like this it's generally favoring a caller more than a, a razor bar in the times I happen to plot the nuts sort of flush combos with just a bottom pair we're giving up and out of position we are going to be following the suited jack very weird that the short stack is limping But overcalling without closing action, it's not the worst candidate to do it, but I don't generally overcall there with any combos. Overcalling there is going to be a losing play long term. Six is perfectly fine to raise on button if it happens to get folded around. Does not. And just folding the junky, junky hand. And likewise again. Double suit kings, pretty reasonable candidate for a raise. Sadly, no action. With this game being short handed, it does mean that there are going to be more hands, but also sort of just more raise and take at spots. Three bet was okay with this, calls okay with it. Either option is fine, to be honest with you. Getting a check call, it does mean that my opponent has a decent number of straight combos in range, which sadly have got there. That being said, he can still have some weak combos like 5 4, 4 6. He can still bow up as well. And we're looking to get value from hands such as like a 5-4 or a 6-4 that doesn't believe. Maybe some of those hands contain an ace. I managed to make ace-5, ace-6, those kind of hands. Sadly, nothing doing on the river. Still perfectly reasonable value bet given the way the hand was played. Bad jack with two back doors. Again, pretty reasonable candidate to continue with. If we get raised, it kind of sucks. It doesn't mean we're going to be folding. Turn a flush draw, but there are a good chunk of straight draws that have improved to either two pair or indeed the straight. We're going to put this in the check all range. And a pretty disappointing run out. My opponent does seem to have like a check or pot strategy. Which in general is not a brilliant idea. That being said, a bet like this tends to be polarized and it's kind of difficult to see what bluffs he has barring king queen. And quite a few of those hands contain a nine, you know, king queen nine draws. Top pair and an open ender, sadly no flush draw with it. Still perfectly reasonable for me to continue with. And defending sevens with a nut suit in position. Opponent checks to me, we're going to stab once and attempt to pick up. And once we make the nuts on the right hand table, we're just going to be trying to extract value off two pair and potential set combos. The river does make that significantly more difficult. We are definitely going to have to size down on this river. There is an argument for sizing up just because that's what we do with all our bluffs, but it's very difficult for us to actually be balanced enough to have a bluff here. Um, so yeah, something about half pot seems fine. 
excuse me while I just close the heads up table and grab another one. Disappointing that that table has broken. Just drop that one straight in. Missed it. Two sex. Let's drop a fifty table in on the left hand table. Flopping the nuts on the deep stack table, we are just going to be again firing off the value. Add a second pair to us to potentially give us some full house redraws. The left hand table is now 50 tables, so I expect the standard to be a little bit better. Going to be defending the double suited sixes with a nut flush. And again, just, just firing off here. Sadly, it does appear that he chases his flush draws pretty hard, but then is capable of folding. Still, always nice to get two streets. Would prefer, of course, to be greedy and get all three, but not always the way. Actually, going to check my jack back here. He can have a somewhat balanced check call ranger. Does mean I'm giving him a reasonable chunk of credit, but again, my hand is kind of strong enough to take showdown without really wanting to bet, just because there are going to be some two pair combos in the call, like nine five six five, which I'm behind. And yeah. 9-5 is very unlikely to fall turn. As much as it doesn't like the spot, it's also too high up in his range for him to fold. It's a pretty clear check call on turn, so uh, I'm okay with the way we've played that. Can we folding versus the limp? Isolation play is not terrible, but I would prefer the hand to be a little more connected, something even like King Jack 8-9 double suited. Uh, you know, something that at least three of the cards work together with, um, which with a hand like King Jack 4 3 just isn't going to be happening. Getting three bet with my nines is not stunningly good news, frankly. It is a hand I'm just going to be giving up with. If I was suited to the ace, I'd be somewhat more incentivized to peel, but suited to the nine, we're not going to. Pretty good hand on the deep sack table. Is one of the a little annoying aspects of playing shorthanded sometimes is that when you're in the big blind, you get a walk when you don't really want one. Uh, Ace queen seven six on the button is just about going to be okay. Um, it's not an enormous mistake to fold it, but it probably is a little too strong. And cut off this is fine. Any earlier position is too weak, but cut off is absolutely fine. Flopping the 8-7 draw with the NFD. Start out with a bet. Hand is strong enough to call raises. And when we get a turn like this, we're just going to be attempting to extract value off second nut, third nut flushes. There are going to be some set combos that decided to slow play flop somewhat erroneously that can now Call a street. Nothing doing. Given the board pad on river, I'm not, from a results point of view, especially heartbroken. But from the point of view of how uh, how nutted I was on the turn, I would have loved it to have got a couple of goals. Again, pretty reasonable button open range. Uh, raise, sorry. It's definitely in range. As I once more struggle with the English language. So my view on the deep stack tables when they run is that they said generally 
players. You won't get the players playing like 80 or 90 beat pick and limping every hand in general. Not to say they're unbeatable, not to say everyone's an absolute crusher on them because that's patently not true, but the incredibly loose people that sit down for like 50 big blinds and then punt off um, just don't really exist on the deep table. So the standard is a little bit higher, but it's, people are still going to make mistakes. People are still going to uh, overplay certain parts of range. Uh, you know, for example, like three betting, uh, you know, a small little size like that. Um, especially in a deep stack scenario where you're not altering SPR to an extent that you want to, it you know, represents a pretty, pretty large mistake. So as long as you can pick up on little things like that, it's absolutely fine. It's going to be feeling the ace-king three deuce. And we're going to take the betting lead when our opponent checks to us. Check calls contain hands like queen jack 10, bear aces, something like king with a jack 10 gut shot, king with a queen jack gut shot. And we're just going to be folding our junkie jack. Our opponent's already shown they're willing to 3-bet, and to be honest, it's a pretty trashy hand anyway. Flop an overlander with a 5-6, but given the presence of hearts, the fact that we don't actually... Uh, you know, have an enormously strong hand here would have meant I would have checked through as is when it's led into me for half part. We're just going to be calling. The hand has, still has enough value to be, you know, calling for sure. It's just I don't really want to, um, you know, bloat the size of the pot if I don't need to by betting into two people. Um, when we absolutely crush the turn, we're obviously going to start going for value. Somewhat of an annoying river. The problem I have is my opponent either has... My opponent can have several things. He can have a two pair that has not both starts, like 9, 7, 8, 7, 8, 9, none of which are going to pay off. My opponent can also have a flush draw, which is totally missed. It's not going to pay off. And then, of course, there are disastrous spots where my opponent has a full house. So I'm basically in a situation where my hand is likely good, but it's not going to extract any value off the hands I'm beating. And... The times I get action, I really don't want the action. So we are just going to be checking through here. And lo and behold, our opponent has a full house. So totally reasonable the way we've played that. We've limited our losses when we've, you know, not been particularly strong, you know, by just calling flop with the intention of checking flop if it had been checked round to us, and by just checking through on river. And we played the hand to try and extract as much value as possible um, when we were ahead in the hand, you know, in the form of betting turns. So, as much as the result's kind of annoying, I think the way we played it was absolutely fine. I'm pretty happy with it. It's a pretty good line from where I'm sitting. So, yeah. It's an unfortunate river, but it happens. Gonna isolate the double suited jacks. The fact I have an ace blocker in my hand as well is pretty awesome. I'm less likely to get re raised. Uh, we have a weak flush draw with a backdoor nut flush draw. I'm just gonna be checking through, trying to realize my equity without massively exposing myself. And I'm actually going to check again, as nitty as that sounds. Unfortunately, we don't improve in any way, shape, or form. Let me check my ace-3 for showdown here. Given the lack of action, the only hands I'm really worried about are like ace queen, ace king, uh, ace jack, which certainly can exist and they're certainly not folding. I don't think my hand is particularly strong in terms of calling pot sized bets on this river. Calling a three bet here with a pretty reasonable hand. It's kind of an annoying flop in that I've connected with it, but in not really a particularly strong way, which is going to be throwing it away. A middle pair, even if I had like a gut shot with my live cards, obviously a flush draw. Um, it would mean I had enough to hang around, but a pair with three, potentially three live cards, no real redraw, it's not fantastic. 
opening up the jacks on the button. Locking trippy threes. There are some better three combos. There are very occasionally some four houses, but we'll cross all those bridges if and when we come to them. For the moment, I will assume I have the best hand and extract, try and extract value until I'm told otherwise. I now fully assume I have the best hand. It's a pretty damn good turn from where I'm sitting. Now lose to exactly Queen's Fall, which I would question exactly how on earth that got there. Do you think it's very likely my opponent was chasing like a 4-5-6 draw or a flush draw on a paired board? Which is a fairly large no-no, but does mean when it doesn't hit, I'm not, I, you know, I won't get paid. That being said, if it does hit, I will pretty much be able to bet whatever the hell I want and get paid. It's also one of the reasons when someone starts teeing off on a paired board. It's generally not a great idea to call down with your draws. Possible my opponent was capable of folding a three, but truthfully, given the fact I had a three in my hand, that's extremely unlikely. Check in a weak flush draw. And check back here and pop control. Excuse me. Okay, with calling with the intention of trying to bluff, catch the very rare times they had a bluff, check through on river. I do have eight blockers for straights, but I don't think my opponent is the kind of gentleman who's going to be, or lady for that matter, who is going to be folding two pair combos here. A little unusual, but totally reasonable. Folding the raggedy rubbish rainbow sevens. Alliteration, I've got it. Might possibly have a fifth player for the last couple of minutes on the deep stack table. As I say that, the little symbol goes. Whoever was thinking of sitting down has had second thoughts. Gonna be defending. Pretty happy doing that. Last time my opponent checked, he checked to give up. I'm going to assume this is likely the same. I do happen to have a gut shot if in some way my opponent does decide to check all. But a board such as this, in general, if my opponent's checking, he's largely checking to give up. The draw heavy board like that, playing it out of position as a check call tends to be a pretty giant money pit. So when I'm witnessing a check like that, I'm going to be betting flop and probably brick turns with a fairly high frequency and then just um, evaluating where I am if my opponent happens to continue. Okay, defend on the right-hand table. Suited to the queen's not fantastic, but it's reasonable. Pretty, pretty average flop, though. An undersized raise. I am still following them. It's a weak enough hand I can get rid. It would be a very elementary defend in the big blind, but with someone to act behind, playing the entire hand out of position to two people, having kicker problems with my ace. It's not quite what I want. Uh, left hand table, when limps, we are going to isolate. I think it's the first time that my opponent's limped. I haven't, can't remember seeing him do that so far. I'm going to be able to play the entire hand in position, flopping a king, queen, jack draw. 
with backdoor clubs. Pretty good news. And flopping the nizzles on the right hand table is pretty good as well. Uh, it's not a fantastic turn. In fact, my opponent called flop is somewhat aggravating to be honest with you. I'm going to take one off. Somehow missed the whole kitten caboodle. That's just an unfortunate fold there. And on the right hand table, we're just going to again tee off, attempt to get my opponent to fire off. Not exactly sure where the auto top up is playing on that. I do have two of the queen blockers again, it's quite unlikely I can get forward, but at some point I feel like my opponent is going to have to get curious. So I'm going to play one more hand on each table and then wrap it up. Well, from what I've seen, the Games seem pretty beatable. They're not crazy loose, but they're certainly beatable. And the rake back, firstly through Guts itself and then through Poker VIP, seems to be particularly good value. So, with that all covered, I've been Tom for PokerVIP.com.